their vocals and their approach to the guitar and to the slide was so incredible. And they are the heart and soul of every chorus of The Weight. I mean, they lift it and add that glory to every chorus. It's really fantastic. <laughs> The timing was cool because it was the 50th anniversary of The Wait. And at the time, uh, my dad and Capitol Records were working on doing some type of release to celebrate the album music from Big Pink. I really wanted to do something special for my dad. That was a real, like the, that was the thrust behind it. I was like, I kind of just wanted to gift something and celebrate him and that song in a really unique way. The rest is history. <laughs> Well, The Weight was a song I've been familiar with as long as I can remember. As, as clear as I can hear, you know, like a family member's voice, that's a song that's just synonymous with feeling at home and feeling like all is going to be okay. I was a big fan of the bands, and uh, The Weight was just one of many tunes that I, I grew up listening to. Love the sound of them because I thought it was so non-stressful you know it just seemed like so natural for them to be playing the way they did and it was a combination of like roots american roots and blues and country and gospel and all this stuff it still had those classic americana cl classic uh, historical references in a way i mean as as a lot of their music did i love the melody and i love the part i like the lyric in the song the great song is the song that talks about the truth it's about sharing and carrying the load of your brother. Everybody has burdens, everybody's struggling, and for someone to offer to help to share your load, it, that can never be out of style or irrelevant. When we were just putting the pieces together, just the rough pieces to have, you know, to have it to take around the world, um, we had Mermans come in, and he played some guitar, and he played some percussion, and then it was kind of like, hey, maybe I'll sing a verse too. And he got on and he sang the second verse of the song and just my jaw dropped. I picked up my bags, I went looking for a place to hide. When I saw old common on the devil walking side by side. I said, hey, come on, come on, let's go downtown. She said, I gotta go. But my friend can stick around. And I remember also in the very, very early stages, I was, you know, a little nervous about playing rough things for my dad. But I was not nervous about playing that verse for him. And I played it for him. And he was like, who's that guy? He was like, that's special. And that's Merman's. Yeah. When we shot the first verse, we went to this young blues man named Marcus King. And it was great to have just slide, swampy vibe um, that also is kind of a wonderful tip of the cap to leave on helm because there's that southern twang and the band ain't the band without that twang. Who could you cast to tell this verse as opposed to that verse and you know I think we were able to do a really good job in that department and I think like a great example of that is to see Lucas Nelson kind of take on that crazy Chester verse and breathe his life into it and it was like a magic moment. The whole concept is a, is a really beautiful concept and that song specifically has a sort of wistful almost like hopeful but sad feeling and I think that a lot of people in this country can sort of relate to that. I said wait a minute Chester, no I'm a peaceful man. I said that's okay boy, won't you feed him when you can. Um, 
It was great to have John Cruz and Hutch together. Hutch did such a great job playing the bass and kind of doing his Rick Danko thing. And John Cruz, I mean, you just watch that verse and you can feel this guy's good vibration. Um, and the set and Hawaii and his whole energy and it was very aloha. Go down Miss Moses, there ain't nothing you can say. When I, you're recording your part of it, you're where you're at, you know what I mean? And you don't know what, but they're going around and putting all these other, and people who they film in other parts of the country, they're only, they only know what they're recording, they're filming, but it gets thrown together and somehow it turns into this together thing, man, that is awesome. Just now I'm, I'm getting to know that I'm playing with that Robbie Robinson and historical living legends, Ringo Starr. Yeah, I feel fortunate enough, yeah. I had no idea what the Beatles was too. <laughs> it's crazy. I kind of did my research and I was like, wow, okay. But I had no idea who Ringo was. I would have never have thought that I'd be able to play with someone who has been a rock star for, you know, 50 years. And so I feel like music has a timeless quality to it. And I honestly hope that one day my music will be able to do the same. And we are all together in this world. We are together. And the music is the way to remind us that we are a human race. It's really important to do whatever it is that makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you got something off of your chest and out of your mind. Uh, and for me, that's music. When Playing for Change came back from J Jamaica and they had Sharita and Rosalind on the last verse, it brought it together and just took it to a whole other level. It was a complete surprise and it is, it's my favorite moment. And take a load off any take it off, take a load for free. Yeah. Take a load off any you can ride on me. <laughs> you can ride on me though. <laughs> I am. My dad smiling at the end was a very impactful moment for me. Definitely chills, maybe even a little welling of tears. It's so clear that he's feeling proud of what's happening with his song, with his son, and with the whole experience of working with Playing for Change. Pretty close, right? Oh, beautiful, man. Right on. Try the solo one more time. I don't think I got back to that point.